Okay, YouTube, welcome to another video. This is a vlog kind of video. I figured that December is upon us, so the holidays are here. So I might as well share a little bit of my tone journey that I've been on for the past couple of months to maybe help some people out with some last minute uh, Christmas gifts, maybe to themselves or for a special musician in their life. Um, yeah, if you could tell by the title of this video, uh, I'm a fractal guy, and uh, I could confidently say that now, um, because I've pretty much tried all the other competition out there. If you haven't seen on my social media, which by the way, the links are in the description of this video if you'd like to go follow me on social media, I have owned a Fractal Audio AX8 for the past two, three years and I have gigged it relentlessly. And I have to tell you, it is probably my favorite piece of gear. Uh, just for the record here, I am not affiliated with Fractal Audio as much as I wish I were. So this is just me wanting to help out as many people as I can through my own personal experience. So, you know, yours might be different and everybody's entitled to their own opinion. I just wanted to share my stuff. So that was just for the record. When I was in Berkeley, that's when like the whole interest of, of, of using the modelers came about because some of my friends had like Axe FX 2s because that was the, the big one in that time. The X8 and uh, Axe FX 3 weren't out yet. Compared to some of the other plugins like Guitar Rig or Bias, some of the kids that would be recording their projects on their Axe FXs, they're just, it just sounded a lot better to my ear. And, uh, you know, around that time, towards the end of my college career, the Helix was announced, and then the AX8 was also announced. So by the time I left college, saved up enough money to buy myself one of these units, I went with the AX8. And on my journey, I have had the AX8, I've sold the AX8 for the Helix, and had the Helix for just about the two weeks for, you know, a full two week before I decided to return it. And uh, I returned it because I came from the AX8 for about a year and using the Fractal Audio stuff, I just got used to the the interface and the, and the axe edit that they have. And I was even able to navigate myself on the AX8 without using my computer to use the edit on there. So I, I personally think it's kind of easy to do just like the Helix is sold on ease of use for the uh, you know ease of use on the actual unit itself. The Line 6 stuff is great. I have friends in the business that use this religiously. You know my, my friend Richie Castellano plays the Line 6 Helix. My good friend Steve Rosenberg that you've seen on this channel he uses the Line 6 Helix and they get great tones out of their Helix. It's just to me it kind of sounds, man, the only word I could use to describe it is loony. Uh, you know, if, if you've ever played a, like a spider or something, it's just that really simple but obviously digital sound. Now, I'm, I'm sure with the right amount of tweaking and money investment that you put into things like, you know, IRs, you know, so your cab simulation's a little bit better. That's where these things start to shine. But it took two weeks for me to use the Helix and go, eh, I came from the Fractal. I clearly think comparison, if you compared the two, the comparison is the Fractal would be better to my ears again, once again to my ears. So I went back to the AX8 and I never looked back from that. So I've had my AX8 the whole time. Uh, when the Axe FX3 was announced, I put myself on the waiting list. I got the Axe FX3, as you've seen in the video if you haven't. Link is in the description of my unboxing video for the Axe FX3. Um, it was awesome. The thing is, it has way too much <laughs> capability. And like, that's a great thing though. It's a good problem to have. If I had to pick a problem, I would wish that it would be, oh man, this thing could do too much. You know, as opposed to, eh, it's not giving me all I need. Um, and I was using the Axe FX3, but again, I still use the AX8 more because I'm a gigging musician. And to me, that's just much more easier than bringing a rack and having to do the setup that would be if I had to gig the three. Uh, side note, also, at this point, the foot controllers for the three have not been released. I didn't want to buy a third party, like, MIDI foot controller when 
I know Fractal is going to release their stuff, which I'm very excited for. Um, so I'm playing with the XFX3 a lot, and I love this sound, and I'm telling myself, eh, you know, I said it before in one of my other videos, guys, if you want to try these things, right? So say you were like me and you were interested in trying these modelers or, or the profile or the Kemper stuff. It's like, unless you have somebody in your in your circle of friends that owns this stuff, it's kind of hard to get your hands on. So I told myself, I said, you know what? I'm gonna sell the XFX3 and I'm going to buy a Kemper powered head. Cause I was like, you know, it sounds cool. I like, the, I like what I was seeing online, uh, on YouTube. So I did. And I sold the XFX3, bought myself almost a $3,000 piece of gear, um, and it came to the house, and I played it, and I have to tell you, you know, I have friends that love the Kemper, I did not like the Kemper. Now, in all fairness, I did not um, give it the best shot it could have had, because I didn't buy any of the profiles. Um, and I feel like that's really where it shines. Or if you have a really big tube amp collection that you want to profile yourself, so you have your tones on the go, maybe you have a nice Mesa Boogie that you want to profile, and you like the lead tone on that, but you have this really great Fender Deluxe Reverb that you just love that clean tone on. So that would be like, oh, on a gig, instead of bringing both of these amps, you could just bring your Kemper. But unfortunately for me, that wasn't the situation I was in. So, no go for me on that one. Long story short, I wind up selling the Kemper, returning the Kemper from where I bought it, getting my refund, and I wound up using that extra money that I spent on buying another XFX3 and a second AX8. It might sound redundant, the point of this video is to share my experience with you guys, to help you guys, so just believe me when I tell you, Having two AX8s are good for me in my line of work of pit stuff because nine times out of ten, I'm leaving my rig somewhere. It's just easier, especially if I have another show booked and I have to have somebody use my gear if they're a sub. So that's why I wound up going with the two AX8s. And then I have the Axe FX3 because that is just by far the best piece of gear on the market today, in my opinion. And I could use it at home if for some reason both of my AX8s were out of the house. Out of the box, the fractal stuff, in my opinion, is better. It's just better. Sounds better. The effects on the fractal audio stuff are superior to the Helix, the Line 6 stuff, and far superior to the Kemper, in my opinion. And that's that's what you see all over the internet anyway. People are like, oh, the Kemper shines on, you know, the amp tone, but not the the, the effects but the fractal audio stuff really, really wins. Like, really wins, hands down. Um, you know, the Line 6 interface, the Kemper interface, and the fractal interface, they're all easy. Um, they're not, it's not, they're, they're, these companies aren't making this gear being like, ho ho, gonna trip you up, guy. You know, it's, it's not just what they do. It's meant for them to be user-friendly, right? Otherwise, they, they, why, that would just be a bad design for, for all of them and a business choice. Now you, who watching this video, if you were thinking about which unit you should get between a Fractal Audio unit, a Line 6 unit, or a Kemper unit, you really need to think about your own personal needs and what you want from your gear. Um, out of the box, they all sound different. Uh, there are videos online where people tweak these things and get them relatively close. My argument is this. If you're going to spend $3,000 on a piece of gear, say you spend $3,000 on an amplifier. We're all guitar players. We like amps. You spend three grand on an amp. If that amp doesn't blow you away, you're not going to be happy, right? Now, somebody would go, hey, man, you spent almost $3,000 on this really great boutique amp, but, you know, you could put your distortion pedal in front of it. Well... It, you you could put your distortion pedal in front of a blues junior, like, you know what I mean, and get get the tone from your your pedal. I mean, it's just my opinion. Take it or leave it. Like I said earlier, the Kemper stuff probably could have been better if I given it the chance. If I spent money on these profiles, and and 
use the resources of online, you know, the Michael Britt profiles I heard really great things about, but once again, I don't really feel like spending all that money on something when I've already put down three Gs on a unit. The Line 6 stuff sounds great. I know on their website, my friend Steve, who's on this channel a lot, Steve Rosenberg, uh, I'll put a little card on the top of the video right now to click to see his uh, YouTube channel. Um, he, he tells me that the, the website there, they have like all the new speaker packs that you can get for the IRs, and he's really excited about that. And I think he bought a Mesa Boogie one that he says changed his, his Helix life, and he, he loves it. But, uh, you know, the fractal stuff, in my opinion, is just so superior, out of the box. And then you could still do things like that for your fractal. You could buy all these third-party IRs, all these outside plugins to help enhance your tone. Another thing that I think is kind of really important too is the feel of these units. Um, the Line 6 very much feels like, like I'm floating, like it's very, very not amplifier. At least the way that I've had it when I set up. Now, in all fairness, once again, I did not sit down with it as long as I've sat down with my fractal stuff. So, if I probably did and tweaked it more, I bet you I could have changed it, but I didn't. So I'm just sharing my opinion. And the same thing with the Kemper. The Kemper really excelled at like cleans and like just breaking up crunches. But once I put those those presets that came on the Kemper up uh, to like some higher gain stuff, some Mesa Boogie, some some really push Marshalls, I, I felt you could really feel the difference. It wasn't as dynamic. It didn't respond as 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 smoothly as my fractal stuff. Uh, you gotta remember, compared to the Kemper, the XFX3, which in my opinion is just a far superior unit, in my opinion, it's cheaper than buying the head, powered head of the Kemper. So right then and there, you're already saving money for something that is arguably better, you know? Uh, and the same thing goes with the Helix and the AX8, if we when we go side by side, I prefer my tone. But also, it's you know you prefer your your stuff. That's why it's yours. But like when I have the AX8 next to the Helix, I enjoy my tone more from the AX8 than I enjoy hearing my friends' tones from the Helix. Um, and also, the AX8 is cheaper than the Line 6 Helix. Just to uh, just to say. Oh, and fun fact also, uh, I mean, it's over now because we're in December, but Fractal Audio had a month-long, uh, like, Black Friday sale, and it was it was really like a Black November sale because they took hundreds of dollars off of both of the both of the things I just said, the AX8 and the XFX3, for, for 30 days, which is way too generous. <laughs> but thank you, Fractal, for being great. I would be more than happy to answer any questions that anybody has. I've had people send me uh, comments, send me emails about, uh, you know, the Kemper stuff when I had the Kemper video, some of the Fractal Audio stuff about patches and signal chains and how I tweak things. And uh, I would be more than happy to answer any and all questions I get to the best of my abilities for you guys. Uh, yeah, so I mean, I hope this kind of helps. There's so many videos out there, people playing these things back to back comparison wise. You know, with, you, you never really know until you try. And I'm just, I was in a situation where I was fortunate enough to have tried all these things, to own them, to have them in my house, to be able to sit down and mess with. And I just wanted to share my experience with you guys because, you know, if I could save you guys hassle, time, and money, I would really rather save you guys from that and then put you through the, oh, I bought this thing and it's not everything that I believed it was going to be, grind. Guys, I really appreciate you taking the time out of your day to check out my video. Um, if you like what you saw, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you want to be in the loop for when I post, click that subscribe button. Uh, as I said before, the links to my social media are in the description if you'd like to give me a follow there. Got a couple of special treats coming up for you these next couple of weeks. We got Christmas time is in the air, so that means holiday music. I'm not going to bombard it. going to probably just do one. One of my Berkeley friends is actually coming to stay for a week, and I'm very excited to have him here. Thank you guys again so much, and I will see you guys on the next video.